Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name is Dan. I'm here in the Philippines, I'm out here in the bright sun next to my, you can see that the roof that fell over during the typhoon. Um, I'm out here because everywhere else just seems too dark, the shade. So I'm trying to go out here. The only downfall here is that it's extremely hot. Uh, I'm going to do a, a requested video. I had a viewer ask me about can they show can I show them my my bolo knives or my parangs. I can't remember how they worded it in a comment. Um, I'll show you the the first knife I had made here to my specifications, customized by myself, and I'll show you the the last one that I made just for the uh, bolos there and I'll do I'll do another video on uh, long knives also about something else okay here's the first knife that I had made here and it's just a uh, traditional style parang uh, it's the same style blade almost to the exact specifications that they would make in Malaysia in the jungle except it's much thicker and it has a full tang a full tang handle on it um, this is made out of a piece of a spring from a vehicle it's out of a van from uh, I can't remember the year of the van but it was a Mercedes a, a, a scrap Mercedes Benz van from Korea and uh, the reason I know that I was there when we took the, sp the springs out of it uh, for this. I made three knives that day. Had three knives made that day. Um, it's a pretty long blade, probably four 14 inches long with a six inch handle. And the first inch and a half or so isn't sharpened. I have that flattened down for a special reason because it's so easy for your hand to slip out on the blade. It has guava slabs on it for the handle and they were just bolted on with just regular old bolts and uh, they don't make full tang knives here in the Philippines they refuse to they, they the guy just had a fit when I wanted this made uh, I paid a whole I think it was seven dollars for the blade to have it made and for the steel put together and I made this in 2004. This is the first knife I had made here when I got here. I made, I made two of them, two of them the same day. And uh, my other one's over here too. Um, I also, the, the, the grip started warping a little bit after four or five years and started getting a little loose. So I wrapped the grips with a product called FiberFix. It's an epoxy type tape that you dip in water and you wrap around it. They give you a rubber glove with it and you, you put it on there. and I didn't know much about it at the time, and he had no idea about what the tape was, but it's absolutely the perfect grip wrap that I've ever found. It hasn't degraded even the slightest little bit. I guess there's a little worn spot here where my where my thumb where my thumb rests. But other than that, it's just smooth there. But everywhere else it's got a nice little texture to it and uh, it holds the grips together. There's absolutely no vibration whatsoever because I put it on tight. But it's a fantastic knife. Now this knife here weighs two pounds. It's, it's too heavy for clearing brush for a long time. Uh, if you want to just blaze a trail while you're going or cut your firewood or whatever, this is great. This is this is a thousand times better than any hatchet. About the same weight. Uh, it's much safer because it has a much longer edge to chop into. The other thing with Philippine knives is I could have had this made any way I wanted, but I wanted to make it traditional Philippine style because their the knives are better. It only has an edge on one side. The back side is flat, and the right side has the edge on it. So when you hit with the with striking with your right hand, it digs into the tree. It, it will never deflect and bounce off like a hatchet will. So so much safer. This is a fabulous knife. And for this knife, I made a heavy heavy PVC sheath, and I put a. Uh, 
uh, tie up here to hook over a handlebar or to hang it on your belt or on your pack or whatever you want. And a Solomon bar, that's the uh, word I was looking for, Solomon bar, like a cobra stitch knot. Fantastic way to carry the blade. And this knife here, I also piggybacked another knife on here. And I have an old hickory that I found back in the early 1980s in Wisconsin, buried in the ground in my yard. And it's kind of a neat, neat knife. But having a, having a, a butcher knife and a bolo knife, this is this is a complete survival kit right here, as far as blades go. These two these two knives here will do anything anything you could possibly need anything you could possibly need. So, just a idea of what I have here. Now the last bolo parang that I had made here is this one. This one's a little rougher, the blade's a little rougher on it. It's very thick, also two pounds. Also about the same length. Has a lot of hammer marks in it and stuff like that. I didn't work, I don't really care about it because it's a work knife. Now this knife also has guava handles on it and I had to grind it all down and fill it in with epoxy and stuff to make it, you know, even and things like that. The maker, this is the first knife that the maker ever made, full tang. This is made by a different guy than that that other one there. This is also made out of a piece of spring steel. A spring from a car. Then the other thing I did with this one here, if you look at the handle, I wrapped jute twine around it in a whipping stitch and then covered that with rubber cement and it gives you just a, a rubbery perfect grip. This great, again here in the Philippines, um, I'm in the tropics it's, it's right where I'm sitting right now it's 95 degrees or more and I'm, I'm just soaked with sweat so if I was using this out working I'd, I'd be all wet dripping sweat all over it and you know you don't want to throw your knife or get hit by your own knife or whatever so you need something you need a you need a positive grip and this jute twine this jute twine is fantastic but this is this is another good knife this is another knife that's just a little too heavy I have I made had two of these made the same day and exactly the same. The second one, when I got home, I cut it off right about here. I cut about three and a half or four inches off of it and changed the angle, the, the edge a little bit. Also wrapped it with jute twine and then I made that knife for my wife kind of for a, a chore knife for her so she can cut open coconuts and things like that. Also a nice knife. Different different fields. Like this this one here, this, these, these big knives are choppers. This is for when you're going to go out and chop wood, you know, chop firewood, stuff like that. You need, a, you need a big knife and you can use this to baton, you know, for splitting your wood, things like that. It's fantastic. For the sheath, made it also out of PVC, CPVC. This was a piece of electrical conduit, I think, or something like that. That's why it's orange. Uh, I just squashed it down completely flat, then heated it up again so it started to mold up a little bit. Then I slid the knife in there and just gently held it around here so that it has a little, a little spot for the handle to sit in there tight. And it, it, it sits in there real nice, you know. Also put a Solomon bar uh, knot handle around the top of it. And on this one here, I, I wanted to I wanted to put another piggyback knife on here, but I didn't have any materials to do it at the time. So on this one here, instead, I added a uh, really nice fire kit onto it. And the fire kit's full of uh, rubber cement, three or four pieces of fat wood, has a lighter in there, and also has a, a ferro rod in there, and, and some. I think it probably has some cotton in there and stuff too, some basic tinder. But it's just for emergencies. I, don't, I would never use it unless I, I really needed it. Uh, but these are both really good heavy duty knives made out of steel from springs from vehicles. And I think it's, what's it called? 51, 5150 or 5050, 50, 60 steel or something. I can't remember what it's called. But it's, it's, good, it's good steel for a work knife. Very, very, very fine uh, steel. So. 
I guess I'll leave you with that. I'll come back with another video a little later here for you. I'll show you some other knives. Okay? Take care, everybody. Hashtag 22 a day no more. Go out and have some fun. Watch your sticks really close. Be extra careful around the water. And uh, don't take things for granted. But by all means, be extra safe, guys. Just, just take care, huh? Thanks for watching.